This is Andrew Mike, Senior Technical Support Engineer at Red Hat, and today we'll be discussing rescuing file systems on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. This video will be discussing and demonstrating a procedure found in an article in Red Hat's Customer Portal Knowledge Base. If you would like to follow along, and if you have a Red Hat Customer Portal account with a valid subscription, you can find the link to the Knowledge Base article in the video description. Data loss happens to the best of us, whether through hardware failure, software errors, network outages affecting network attached storage, or other issues. Linux file systems can enter a state where they are unable to be mounted by the operating system. In some cases, this damage can be repaired using the rescue mode found on the RHEL installation disk. This video will discuss booting to the rescue mode, identifying file system partitions, and executing file system repair commands. Before we proceed, however, we must discuss the caveats and potential dangers of this procedure. Any repair work on a file system carries potential risk, especially if repair procedures are not performed correctly. It is, therefore, vital that these procedures be executed exactly as directed. In particular for this procedure, do not, under any circumstances, run these repair commands on a mounted file system. Doing so will cause system instability and further data loss. In addition, this procedure is not guaranteed to be 100% successful in restoring all data to a previously functional state. Even if this procedure is completed successfully, some data may still be lost. As such, this procedure is no substitute for having full, up-to-date, robust, and tested data backups, and we greatly urge you to have them. With those preliminaries out of the way, let's proceed. The first step in this process is to identify the paths of the partitions to be rescued. This process requires knowledge of the system and knowledge of which partitions are damaged. For each partition we're working on, we need the full path under slash dev that describes the partition, like slash dev slash sda1, or slash dev slash mapper slash volume group dash logical volume. How to identify these partitions is outside the scope of this video. Next, we need to obtain an installation disk for the version of RHEL the affected system is running. For our purposes, either the boot ISO or the binary DVD ISO will suffice. These can be found in the download section of the Red Hat customer portal. For this demonstration, we'll be using a RHEL 9.6 boot ISO. Next, we will be booting into rescue mode on the RHEL installation disk. The process varies depending on the version of RHEL being booted into, but we will cover the basic one for RHEL 7 and later here. To start with, be sure that you've configured the system to boot into the installation disk. In our example, we are using a virtual machine, so we will use the VM console to set up the boot order to start from the boot ISO. Consult the documentation of your system vendor for further details. After booting the system, we will be taken to the installation menu. From here, we select Troubleshooting, then Rescue a Red Hat Enterprise Linux System. Press Enter, and then the system will proceed to boot into rescue mode. RHEL 6 has a largely similar menu. From here, the system will, after a few moments, ask us whether we want to mount the root file system of the machine. Our work must be done on an unmounted file system, and in many cases the mounting process is likely to fail anyway, so we will select Skip to Shell here and press Enter as necessary. From here, we should arrive at a root shell prompt. At this point, some devices, like LVM volume groups, may not be attached yet. In order to remedy this, some preliminary commands may need to be run. If there are LVM volume groups that need to be attached, this can be done with the command vgchange-ay. If your system has volumes under software RAID, you will need to initialize the RAID array to make those volumes visible with the command mdadm-assemble-scan. This VM uses LVM volume groups, so let's attach those now. Once we've attached the volumes and identified the partitions, we can start the repair process. The specific command to run will depend on what type of file system the partitions contain. The two most common types of file system on RHEL partitions are XFS and EXT4. We will cover both. 
XFS is the more straightforward of the two. We can type XFS underscore repair and then the partition path, and it will start repairing the partition. For ext4 partitions, we need to use the fsck, or file system check command, with specific options, namely dash f v y. Let's explain these options briefly. Dash f will force a file system check. This is necessary to keep fsck from skipping checking the file system if it was checked recently. Dash v is for verbose mode, which will show us what fsck is doing. Dash Y will answer yes to all questions FSCK would ask. This is desired because otherwise, if it finds a bunch of bad inodes or blocks, it will ask us if we want to repair every single one. Dash Y skips that process. So the total command is E2FSCK-FVY and then the partition path. Instead of e2fsck, you can also use fsck.ext4, and it'll do the same thing. Once the repair command is complete, we can remove the boot disk and reboot the system to see if the partition is able to mount. If it is, we're done. If not, there may be something else going on, and it may be time to open a support case with Red Hat to see if we can assist. This concludes the demonstration. If you have further questions or need further assistance, please feel free to file a support case and we'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching.